Hey, what's up guys? Alex with Softstar Retrofit Pros. Hey, I'm here at one of my jobs in um, West LA near Beverly Hills. And um, I wanna talk to you a little bit about, it's a little quiet right now because the guys aren't here yet. So I wanna take this opportunity to talk to you about how we prepare a building for a cantilever uh, column. As you know, for those of you that have been following us, I don't like cantilever columns, generally speaking, as a methodology for software retrofitting. But occasionally, it'll be best suited for various reasons. One of them, the space that you have for parking, the setup in the building. In this case, there's this drop stucco piece, right? From the bottom of those holes to this section there. That's just an architectural feature, it's not structural. Even though this crazy beam is there, there's no way it would hold any weight. Actually, there's nothing on that corner there. That stuff's attached from the outside. Rule number one, always open up the stucco before you do the design. In this particular job, we didn't do that, so we had to go back and do a redesign for the top connections. In soft thread retrofitting, taking time for a good design is really important. Planning out what you're gonna do, really thinking about what the load paths are gonna be, all of that stuff is a really good investment of time so that you get a very good end result. So let me walk you through some of the things that we, that we did here and why. Cantilever columns, by nature, it's a small connection point, okay? The bucket that was gonna go on this, on this beam right here, that bucket is, is the contact point that's gonna connect the building to the ground. It tends to be 18 inches, and that's not a very wide connection point. A moment frame would give you, for instance, 17 feet or some cases 20 or 22 feet of connection because you have the top beam that would connect with the drag line. This building has issues because it has a cantilever. Originally, it was not designed with this post and stuff. It was just designed to have this cantilever. The cantilever is about seven feet. They don't really allow that anymore in their current building codes. And again, we're not trying to build this building to current building codes because that would cost a fortune. What we're trying to do is fix some of the things, some of the flaws that we know will cause a failure. As part of that solution, we dealt with the initial drag line, okay, which is the I-beam that is above the garage openings. And what we did is to fight torsion, to fight those that I-beam from twisting and breaking apart, we put in four by material on both sides. So it has this ledger nailer here, and then there's a, an, another one on the inside. Now together, when you bolt those things, it's gonna help fight torsion. On the top, we did a double blocking with a bunch of LTP5s. And then to connect to the existing diaphragm, we did those little angles up there, which are A35s. Now you'll notice that there's a lot of return angles here. And this is because this is the area near where the cantilever is. So we're dispersing the energy. We're increasing the footprint of the connection of the diaphragm to the floor joist to the drag line, the new drag line beam, and then the cantilever column that's gonna be right here where this, this post is. We put this in because that PSL beam is heavy as shit, and we, we didn't wanna put a whole lot of stress on the building. We're going to move these and put them up here when we dig out the trench next week. Check this out, this is a very, very important thing. We are also protecting the cantilever at the perpendicular. So initial requirement for the city is that lateral forces are resisted th in this direction. But guess what? The earthquake is gonna move, it's gonna oscillate, right? It's gonna move in a circular motion. So that means that you're gonna have stress coming this way. You gotta deal with that. So we did. We beefed up this return piece that's gonna be right in front of the cantilever. And there's gonna be some braces from the, from the cantilever column attached to there. And that's gonna help prevent the wood from, from from torsioning and it's also going to help deal with the forces coming this way that's a really critical critically important uh, point here instead of trying to figure out how to do the minimal like many of our competitors we want to make sure that since the area is already opened up that we're doing the most that we can to strengthen the building in the areas that we're already working on that is our philosophy that is what i want to develop a reputation for I understand that this isn't for everybody. You know, many build building owners are just trying to reduce the cost of the construction. And I'm of the opinion that that's probably 100% the wrong approach. 
That doesn't mean that I am absolutely indifferent about cost. What that means is that I wanna put the money where we think the most benefit is gonna happen. In San Francisco, they would have opened up other sections of the building and they would have gone in the units and put new wood and new connectors in there. And the LA ordinance doesn't require that. Frankly, I guess everybody would be outraged in price because you're talking about something that's four or five times the cost of what we're doing now. The purpose of this video is for me to bring awareness to the things that have to happen if you're gonna use a cantilever column. Ideally, use a moment frame if you have an opening bigger than 12 feet. But if you can't, then do this. Let's talk about what we did in the area where the actual cantilever is gonna be. You've got a new five and a quarter PSL beam by 12, and then you've got this new blocking. It's a blocking system that we came up with. And then there's a cap, a four by cap, which is where that LTP flat plate is tying into. When you do that, you can get lateral strength in excess of 40,000 pounds. That's a tremendous amount of strengthening in a section where it's gonna get a tremendous amount of force. What we are doing in essence is tying the floor system, the diaphragm, which is that diagonal one by, which by the way is very weak. We're gonna add some more A35s in this section here. We're tying the diaphragm to the floor joist, the floor joist to the blocking, the blocking to the drag line beam, the drag line beam to the new cantilever, the cantilever to the new grade beam. When we do this, we have a predictable load path because we actually created it. All of our competitors are just putting in the cantilever, they'll maybe do some kind of a collector in there, which is solid blocking and call it a day. And basically what you're doing is you're putting yourself at the mercy of the condition of the existing wood. There are sections of the wood that is in really bad shape. Now, this happens to, in this building, for the most part, the wood is pretty good, okay? The diaphragm, I really don't like very much, that diagonal. In general, that stuff is pretty crispy and it's a very small dimension lumber. So I don't, I don't like it very much. So we have to make it perform the best that we can. This is a very clear load path. And if you're gonna use a cantilever column, you better have a designated clear load path to connect the old with the new. That really is the secret sauce of using a cantilever. Look, for your engineer to figure out what the dimension of the cantilever column of what the beam is gonna be, it's pretty, pretty easy. Most of them can do that. Putting enough importance in the framing is missing from 90% of the plans that have come across my office. And by the way, I've seen well over 100 plans in the last six months, and very few of them have any call for any new wood, any significant new wood to the structure. Not adding more wood to the building is a big, big mistake that you shouldn't make. If you wanna learn more about how to properly uh, retrofit your building, please give our offices a call. And obviously, if you wanna learn more about Soft Story Retrofitting, visit softstoryretrofitpros.com. Everything that's on softstoryretrofitpros.com is for you to be a better informed consumer. This stuff is really important. It's important that you get it right. So please take some time, educate yourself, know what it is that it takes to get a retrofit done right. And if you have any questions, obviously call our office. My name is Alex with Softer Retrofit Pros reminding you, you don't need a contractor. You need a team of pros.